Hello, I'm Julie, and this is going to be a demo on how to use soft pastels on shrink plastic. These are not oil pastels, and they're not chalk pastels. Chalk pastels have more chalkiness in them. These are art pastels. This is a set I got on Amazon, and it was like $12. So um, soft pastels are just that soft um, ground-up pigment. And then you can get higher grade sets. This is a Prismacolor set. And their pastel is called the New Pastel. And it's a very firm pastel. So very hard compressed. And then you can buy in art stores from like Dick Blick, all sorts of sets from fancier brands like Rembrandt and Senelier and, um, you know, German and uh, uh, French pastels and... Just, uh, just a whole array of pastels single by the stick or by the set. So these guys are really messy, so I keep wet ones around to wipe my fingers. Um, I'm also going to dem demo using some colored pencils and some inks on, on these. And then some sprays, of which I will get into when we get to that point. So I have my stencils out... I have my demo shrink plastic here ready to go and cut sizes. And then one of the things that I like to use with the pastels is a is sandpaper. And this is like a 1200 grit. I got this at Harbor Freight. So just a nice fine sandpaper. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. I'll be demoing with the, the Prismacolor new pastels. But like I said, the inexpensive ones were yeah. just the same. So let's get started. These are two bigger um, shrink plastics beads that I'm going to make because demoing with a larger bead uh, shows gives you a better opportunity to see what I'm going to do. And when you buy my, buy my basic molds, you get a basic template. And this is really easy to put in your copy machine and blow it up and make larger beads. And for hand cutting, larger beads are much easier to cut out than smaller beads. So that's what I did with these two larger ones. Mm. Not going to worry that I still have some of my pencil line around them because this is a demo. I'm going to pick out some colors to use in this demo. Pink. Just some nice bright colors. And then this is a color I love to use all the time. Okay, so the first thing I do is the sandpaper is so that I can rub off quite a bit of pigment and make it easy to collect on a Q-tip. I like Q-tips much better than those little kind of cosmetic sponges because when I rub them on the sandpaper, the cosmetic sponges to collect my pigment, it wears those down really fast and it doesn't wear the Q-tip down. So I can gather a lot. But for right now, I'm going to show you just putting this on with your finger. This is so easy and makes such beautiful graduated colors, soft colors. The um, pastel can remain very opaque, I mean remain very translucent, or you can build it up very heavy. And you always have to do this on the sanded side. That um, pastels only will adhere to the sanded side. So you'll notice I have a lot of scrap paper here, and that's to keep my pigment... Um, pigment away, the pigment, du the dust from the pigment off of my piece. I'm going to come in with an outline here in this great Celadon green. This is just showing the, you the variety of things that can. You do not have to outline. You do not have to do anything that you don't want to do. Just your design is intuitive and should be um, should reflect your taste. 
it just this one here just seemed to scream these two wonderful greens to next to each other so that that we'll see we'll see what colored pencils look like looks like on that and then I'm going to come in here with the yellow and halo this and notice I'm going to leave this halo of transparency here because it's going to be really pretty seeing through when I choose to use stencils on it. Let's grab a stencil I like. And what's nice about the stencils is I can just pick and choose what elements I want to highlight. Meaning, right here, just reforming it. Just blow off your extra dust. It greens very close to my yellow um, in color. Um, but we'll see how it turns out when it's shrunk down. Blow off any excess and you see a lot of those nicks are my pencil marks. So let's come in here, this nice gray brown. I think this is a French gray, one of my favorite grays. And simple, I find, is best. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to do my next one. Nice clean paper. This one I'll put some stencils on it so you can see, um, I mean some ink on it so you can see how inks work with that. Their technique. I'm going to pull out this peach color. And look how easy pastels make it to mix on your palette. So you make this soft orangey peach color. Put fingers on my tip. Look at that yummy color. I, I just I really like to use this soft look of finger rubbing, but then I can blend with my um, Q-tip. So let's get that moved over. Come in here with another stencil that I like. I'm going to try to find one that has a little bit of a different um, motif. And this is really pleasing. So another really fun thing to do with the stencils is to take, if you don't feel you're very good at drawing, to take your outlines of your stencils and use colored, a nice sharp colored pencil in those spaces. And you can either fill in then with colored pencil, a different color of color pencil, or create a very, very soft. I'm going to mix some colors here. Nice soft orange. Get myself enough pigment there. And I can do a little halo effect. Either my fingers. Look how as I wash that away, the pencil shows back up. 
a little deeper orange in there. Very nice for graduated colors. Now let's pick a stencil that will be nice for the um, for our ink to go down. And I'm going to use a little sponge, and this is pink. Dopping it on. And then graduating it out. Making sure that I fill in as much of the stencil areas that I want. More rubbing ensures that. Less will get you more of a, a, a handmade block print look. So very pretty pastels mixed with stencils. And we're going to come in this with this interesting blue-green. There, that's as far as I want to go. I could stencil on the other side too. I mean, ink on the other side because inks will work on both sides. As you see in my demo, I'm using inks on and stencils and stamps on shrink plastic. Now, these are a little smaller ones, so now I'm going to do with the fluted spacer bead. And flip my palette over. Now, for storing your palette, I recommend going to the grocery store, getting some wax paper, big sheet, fold it over, slip your sandpaper in between the wax paper, and put it on a plastic bag. And then you have um, a nice. This is the one I'm going to use. Then you have a, a nice storable uh, package of sandpaper to use later on. Pretty. see what these are out here. Well, here's one that might be, oh, polka dots. We always love polka dots. Let's come in with some polka dots. Mixing that with some of the green. Yummy! I may have gotten this one a tiny bit off center. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Watch. Well, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna change that. Well, yeah, yeah. Look what I can do. If I get that off center, I can simply smear it all and do it over again. Or better yet, you can take your shrink it 
and put it under the sink and wash it off. And start over again. So then you're going to ask, well, then how permanent is the shrink is the pastels on the shrink plastic? Well, when you shrink the plastic down, pigments do embed into the plastic. But with um, they're better. But with with the um, pastels, I recommend using a fixative. Any kind of spray fixative. Fixative. This is fixative is a spray for artwork, um, and it's really good on pastels. You can get it in workable fix fixative and final fixative. And workable means that the surface of your pastel paper, if you've got fancy pastel papers, will not be affected, and you can work back into it. Final will probably make take away some of the grit just with a stronger sealant. But if you're not worried about wanting to go back in and you um walk back in and work with your work, any spray fix will work. Like Rust Oleum and Crayon makes Krylon makes spray fixes that are just sealers and in all degrees of sheen from matte all the way to shiny. And I've never noticed them taking away any of the uh, any of the amount of sanding on the shrink plastic that you can't go in and rework it. There we go. Now on this one here, um, I'm going to come in with my own. Oops. And I'm going to flip this over and This is the shiny side. This may not show up too much because this is asking it. It's pretty. Oh, no, it did. And with that, I always, um, when I'm on the shine, I, I usually, when I'm putting ink down on shrink plastic, I blot. There we go. Number three. And then I will be demoing one more for you. And this one here, I'm just going to keep with straight. Um, whoops, that's the shiny side. Yikes. But I mean, I mean, I'm not finishing my sentences. Sorry, I'm just gonna not use any colored pencils. I'm just gonna show you what it looks like if you just do pastels on your piece. Looks like this is just ink from another project, and. Let's pick let's do something unusual. Let's put an olive green in there. Oh, be careful that that doesn't happen. I didn't have my finger on both the stencil and the shrink plastic. New damage done. Now 
Once again, I'm a little off-centered on that. Be careful when you do them to make sure you stay on center. So here we are with our four little pieces. And I'm going to come in and spray seal them. And then I'm going to do some specialty techniques with the sprays that I talked about. So two of the sprays that I'm going to be demoing is uh, the shimmers, the, the glitter shimmers from Krylon. And a lot of companies make a shimmery spray paint from a very intense, some of them are like lots of glitter, so be very careful because you won't be able to see anything except glitter. Just some that are shimmers, just a light mist. Um, Krylon makes some wonderful colors like that it's kind of called their candy line. They have can I think it's candied pear. They have candied apple, um, candied pumpkin. They have these these candy colors that are really fun to use. They also, Rust-Oleum also has, oh, in the shimmers they have this in opal, glistening gold, and glistening silver. And then the other one that I really like to use is Rust-Oleum, their chalks. Really like whenever I can get a Rust-Oleum spray paint because it's just superior than, I think, Krylon brand. And I haven't tried any of the liquid techs. They're expensive but wonderful, too. And you know that I love to use Design Master's tints. Um, but I'm not showing any of that on here because I'm getting a tint look with the pastel, so no need. So the chalks go on matte, and they create like a real nice lacy look. So two things. When spraying, spray outside, and when shrinking, use proper ventilation. I don't have that luxury right here because this is the demo. So you can spray on both sides. It's really fun to spray on the shiny side and have the pastels on the matte side. I'm going to use a bigger stencil for this because the piece is bigger. And if you want to be uh, careful, you know, it, it, with your pattern, your stencil pattern, uh, you can line it up. This one doesn't really line up, so I'm going to use something. I think I'm going to use something more organic so it doesn't matter. There we go. center my circle shake 12 inches a pot away and just a soft mist there and i'll punch a hole in that before i shrink it down so on this one i'm going to use the um I'm going to use the gold. And once again, I want to use a bigger um, bigger stencil so I don't have I, so I don't have overlap there. So I don't have edges so that my stencil is covering it all up. And I on this one here, I'm going to. Um, spray on the matte side. So when my piece is done, it'll have the matte pastel behind it and then a glisten over the matte with that will be this spray. 12 inches apart and less is more with these glitters. There. Okay. Then on this one here, I'm not going to do any sprays at all because I want you to see what it looks like if you just don't spray. And on this one here, I'm going to spray glitter on the shiny side. Wait, no, I sprayed shiny side there, so I'm going to spray um, white on the matte side. That's what I had it done. I'm going to pick something different 
This ought to be really cute. And I just misted that really lightly. I just want a real subtle look on this. Okay, I'm going to let those dry before I shrink them down in the next step. Here we are, we're ready to shrink down. And let's start with this little cutie pie right here. I'm going to put him in the little white mold. And I'm going to showcase the matte side because that's where I see the most detail. And this was just plain, um, well, no, this one, this one was just plain shrink plastic. This was plain with white spray uh, on polka dot. And you could do that white with white ink, too. That white look where I used the white chalk spray, you could use white ink stamp and a dauber. When you use sprays on your shrinkets, it's good to have ventilation because the spray the sprays get heated up from the heat gun and can emit an odor, and then the odor goes away after they cool down again. So you can see how that is just a wonderful, lovely, um, lovely shrinkets. And keep us a little closer in here. Love how that one turned out, matte on matte. Now, let's do the one that's just straight pastels. And all of these were spray sealed. I'm not worried about the spray seal um, activating so much when you heat it up as I am these real intense glitters and chalk paints. So no worries about ventilation, I don't think, with um, with the spray fixative. It just doesn't have, it doesn't go on heavy enough. But, you know, just use common sense. So this stopped moving on its own accord, but it didn't totally flatten out, but I know it's ready to be shrunk, and the mold will create the shape that I want it to make. And this is a fluted spacer bead mold, and it doesn't have a top and the bottom, so we can choose whichever side we want to showcase, depending on how we just use it in a design. And this is lovely. This is just um, shrink it. This is just pastels, straight pastels and a little colored pencil. Really nice. Okay, let's go up to the star mold, and I'm going to use my wipes there and just make sure my mold is clean. You can wash these off in the sink with dish soap and um, warm soapy water, or you can use, we all like you know, little diaper wipes or wet ones here too. I'm going to go ahead and clean my, my well-loved beet molds. Okay. So we're going to put 
the star mold. We're going to put use the star mold because this is a five point and the five point petal um, flower, and this is a five point petal flower. So this should be nice in it. I'll probably have to adjust it again. I'm going to put the sh the gold outside. That facing down, so it'll be on the dome surface. Concentrating on just the petals. No worries. They will hopefully curl out on themselves. Just let it do it. Stay with it. Just let them curl back out. And then I have to put, put them in their formation. Stop moving on its own accord. Coming down here and pressing. And being gentle with this a little bit because it is a silicone mold, so it's no stick. But there is gold on there. And the gold tends to get real kind of gooey a little bit when it heats up. And then it dries back out. But it can be sticky. You'll see. See, it got a little sticky there, but silicone is perfect for that. Now, see how absolutely lovely that is? This is one of my new favorite techniques. So, and lovely on the outside, too. Now, let's go for this big one. And we're going to put this in the um, bezel mold. And I am going to... Put the shiny side down. One thousand one, one thousand two, one thousand three, one thousand four, one thousand five. This is going to be lovely. I absolutely love what I'm seeing already on this side. Bigger beads showcase more um, of your design. Smaller beads are harder to show all the detail that you've put into them. So smaller beads keep the design simple. Um, got some white paint came off on that. Let's wipe that off. And there we have this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous bead in back on this side. If I lay it down, I don't know if you can, there, there you can see how the white comes through. And then the white looks like a lace pattern on the top. So here we are with our um, pastels on shrinkets. Thanks for joining me.